good morning all we will start today okay so what we saw last time was uh, the process of uh, adapting visual communication into your entire presentation but it loosely applies also to the entire presentation planning as such okay so we saw the brainstorming part and uh, we also did a mind map of uh, a given topic <coughs> what we will have a look at today is called execute where your plan is converted to a presentation where you will see lot of other details coming up from what you had just brainstormed and thrown away some words and phrases and try to form a uh, cohesive layout out of that that's what mind map was in fact that was a very interesting question last time somebody asked what is the difference between a mind map and a concept map right uh, so after i left the class i tried to uh, probe more into that question and actually that answered uh, one another question which was asked uh, what to do with some serious topics like our mtech thesis somebody asked that you asked that right okay so concept map the basic difference is that in mind maps you draw it uh, so you you draw a central theme and then you have uh, uh, pointers coming out of it so it's radial in nature on the other side concept map is top down so you will always have this as the top and then everything will come down so it's a hierarchical uh, structure first thing secondly it is very important or actually mandatory to name these connectors with a appropriate preposition or a verb so if you say that uh, these are seasons and uh, okay so you have four types of seasons so then you actually draw this and make it into four and say are uh, classified in so this is the title given to the connector and then you write something so this this is mandatory for a concept map to to put a connector and label it which is not the case in a mind map you can just say seasons and you can say summer winter spring and autumn whatever that that's a basic difference into that so why i said that it answers your question is because you can easily describe a concept using a concept map as opposed to mind map mind map is more informal way of structuring and it's a direct outcome of a brainstorming which is actually again informal right let's go ahead on this actually so impress will be the last part as i said last time and we'll have a look at it in the next lecture today we'll be on execute but before that we'll just recap what we were doing we started off with this point of everybody loves stories and we thought of a mind map and there were some mind maps submitted i am just going to show you some of the mind maps uh, out of the submitted mind maps you can't see anything uh, bad visual communication uh, let's see if this is readable can you read at least something out of this no last benches can't <coughs> okay but this is what i have so this is another problem we found out that out of the submitted mind maps almost 80% mind maps were non readable because they were having too much of content and when you zoom out you have to have a very small font size <clears throat> on the other side there were some efforts done by people you will see that in your print out there people used images and people used very big fonts and colors and some icons and some smileys and all that to make it uh, a very informal way of presenting what they wanted to but yeah we will what we want to see is something different can you see this one at least no my god i can't do anything to this but let's uh, let's just discuss part of it uh, what it talks about is a uh, the topic is software piracy uh, what you see here is actually they have they have given three parts of this thing one is called cause one is remedies and one is effects there are only three parts 
please switch off the mobile phones. Uh, can you see this at least? Right. Okay. So this is how uh, people have uh, this. This person has classified the mind map into, and um, then there are secondary or tertiary hierarchies, and there are some fourth levels also. But okay. So what what can you make out out of this type of a mind map? So what do you okay? What do you find missing in this? So what information is missing in the entire thing? So you have cause, you have effects, and you have uh, remedies. Anything missing? Anything you find which is not so okay? If you are given this chance to brainstorm on this topic of software piracy, what will you like to add apart from these three things? Pardon me? No, I'm not getting it. What is software piracy? Okay. Uh, some definition part of it, okay. Uh, so that actually, that will be uh, maybe definition or you can just say information about what is pi because we actually don't know, you wanted to actually, uh, maybe you can classify it into types because lot of people are not aware that how is software piracy uh, happening? So most of the people actually, when I met a couple of them uh, asking about operating system, most of them say, we have bought the computer and the person gave us Microsoft along with it. So uh, I have bought it, right? So they are just not aware that the person has not given you original CD and a license, which can be of uh, your own all the time. So they were just not aware of this. So such kind of negligence is already embedded into the system, which makes it very difficult for them to even understand that they are pirating a software. So there will be a couple of things which are missing. I think software piracy was also a topic which was discussed here. By the way, this mind map I'm showing is from the last year, somebody who had submitted last year. And uh, this year, a couple of people have attempted that. So the task now is, uh, <coughs> what you should do is, you'll have a mind map in front of you. Just first of all, write your group star number on that. It will have one group star number already written there. So right at the, on the other side, maybe left hand corner, your group star number, and then identify the hierarchy issues in that. What has happened is that something which is here should actually be here. Because it is a, it, it, under that hierarchy, you can actually write more things. But it has just gone at a ter tertiary level sometimes. So try to find out such point and bring it at, at the secondary level. So if this is the primary level called software piracy, try to bring it at secondary level. And then see what, what changes it, hap, uh, it can provide you in terms of explaining the concept in a better way. So just try putting some thought into the mind map you have there by discussing within your group and find out is there any such point which can be brought forward or something can be pushed at the back. So just try out doing that with the mind map you have. And then suggest the rearrangement. So you can just by pen, you can say that move this year or move this year. And then once you are done, <coughs> I want everybody to just push that paper forward to the front rows and we'll collect this. What did you get, land ban? What was your topic earlier? Um, tum, tum, tum. Achha, good. So you have a swap. OK, it does not matter even if you get the same topic. Make sure that it is not your own mind map, that's all. Hey, can you all see this? Right, so this is done by one group and corrected by another group. Uh, the group which has submitted is uh, 046, which is the group? Having the star number 046. Here is a, another group by 005 who have made the corrections, which is here. OK, so they have given some pointers. Now, I wanted your feedback on uh, <coughs> the corrections they have made. So they have added a bubble called myths, right? So life at IIT, maybe there are some myths al around, right? OK, so you wanted, do you agree with that bubble? Is it necessary? So 046, your comment on that. So do you feel there should be a bubble called myths at Myths about life at IITB. Will it make it more interesting or? 
not necessarily it should be okay and they have classified actually moral values within uh, myths why <laughs> why is that by the way can you explain yeah so if we are saying that iit uh, life in iit is a learning experience in moral values then that can actually be a myth okay so it it is like a loop now is what you say <laughs> and why do you say that this is the future so from advantages you have added one more uh, bubble called future prospects right ha huh, now give it to me uh so these are so what is connecting to that uh, so you want learning experience we are we are categorizing advantages as current advantages and future prospects Ah, okay. So they talk about two different levels of advantage. Once when you are here, and once you are out of IIT. So there are two different types of advantages. They are not one and the same. That's what you meant, right? You keep it with them. Uh, so how to enjoy is connected to learning experience, right? Why is that so? Uh, here, this one. So this is the connection you have given. So why is that uh, learning experience and how to enjoy? is it like work hard play hard type of thing so how to enjoy while you are learning is that what you meant oh okay <laughs> so do you agree with that connection it's okay you can take it okay so anything you wanted to change so what is that slash weekdays yeah use the microphone okay so okay so life at iitb is separate on weekdays and weekends that's what you meant right okay <laughs> okay but there is something called weekends so you wanted to have counterpart of that called weekend weekdays okay has anybody else uh, finished their uh, editing of mind map just pa pass it on you have another version of life at iitb right show me Okay, so here is another take on life at IITB, and uh, this is done by zero four three. Who is zero four three? Ah, okay. You are a single person group. Acha, you are absent, so you did it on your own and sent it off. Okay, good. So single person. Uh, so that was. By the way, it was very much identical to the earlier one. So did you sit together while doing it? <laughs> it was almost copied i i didn't print it because i thought it was same what was the difference by the way tell me no difference <laughs> that was a sheer case of plagiarism <laughs> that was a sheer case of plagiarism okay <laughs> interesting thing can happen because another group has has uh, modified the uh, their mind map so one group i modified one mind map and the other group has mind same mind map has been modified by another group so let us ask them why what modification they did that and why so what is this uh, so you wanted to say exams is one thing and then you have one a and one b actually that that was our that was our previous understanding of the question that on we discussed is that and we changed our uh, arrangement over this time we are trying to move that back to that of our level and if you can that we can have relaxed with whether there is a weekend or not Yeah, change that from primary level to secondary level to primary. Level. Then there is a few things of having at that level. So relaxing is the main thing. <laughs> the <laughs> education is secondary, by the way. <laughs> no, no, the, but one uh, word of caution to this group, especially. You have cut too many things that than you have written them, actually. So you have cut too many times what you have written. So that is good at the brainstorming level. But I think because you all missed your first class, right? so that is why you have formed a new group here and that is why you have been erasing a lot of things so when when such point comes you just debate between yourself first of all and then put it on the paper that's easy for people to follow also <coughs> why do you have this double sided arrows so is it a loop kind of thing acha you wanted to make facilities at the as the primary level and uh, hostel life is a part of facilities is that what you said okay 
North Indian food is so North Indian food is part of facilities or it's a separate separate chunk itself. <laughs> primary level. Okay, how many people agree that North Indian food should be the primary level bubble here? How many people agree? Okay. There is one person in your favor, but not many. <coughs> okay, so what it brings out is that people often uh, have, uh, so overall whatever you have seen the mind maps. Now please uh, pass on to the front rows because we will be just collecting them right now. So even if you have done uh, some work, it's okay. You can just pass it on to the front row. I wanted to show you how others have created the mind map so that you can compare with your work and their work. Also, if you have done some corrections, that will be the... Okay, here is one. By the time you just uh, put it. Where is uh, 006? Roll number 006, star roll number 00. Okay. So you, you did this mind map, right? And uh, it was about social media. And you had disadvantages and advantages at the two main bubbles. So the suggestion is given by 034. Where is that group? Ah, okay. So you said that uh, helpful in disaster. And uh, so what is view propagation is the first thing, right? You wanted to have. Can you just explain the mind map probably from there? Ah. You have added a couple of bullets, I can see that. Okay. Okay. Uh, second is, I can't read it myself actually from the thing. But I will read it for you. This is the second which says information. So you say social media is playing an important role in disseminating some information. That is why. Ah, okay. The whole motivation of this exercise was to to evaluate each other's mind maps and see if you can read the same story, like at least similar story, if not the same story. And uh, obviously, people uh, have added a couple of other things. Lot of groups did this advantages, disadvantages, and only two bullets, and nothing beyond that. So, and there was like too many tertiary and fourth level bullets in, into that. Okay. Uh, <coughs> So when we want to execute our planning level, so we, we had our presentation in the complete spread out visual kind of uh, outlook, which is a mind map. When we want to go ahead of that and execute it as a proper presentation, so we need, so our primary bullets, we can call them, because the topic is already social media, for example. And we have these primary bullets as our topics for within a slide. We have subtopics which we already have written. So if you see people who are having like five or six primary topics have a presentation of five slides definitely with them. And uh, what uh, people who had already some visuals with that also have some visuals along with the topics. So the presentation is almost there now. It's only a matter of how you want to uh, actually convert it into a software which will give you create uh, facility to create a slide presentation. But the important point here is to remember to use short phrases instead of sentences. And that is very, very common mistake I have found in across presentations. So not only sentences, people have a tendency to write paragraphs, which is even worse. And uh, they also present it in such a way as if the people who are sitting in front can't read. So they read that entire paragraph also on top of that, which is even worse. So please avoid such things. Uh, if, if you have too many things in that topic and subtopic, make multiple slides of that. That's very, uh, so I'll just uh, try to show you. Yeah, so last year actually we had ta taken up this subject for the brainstorming thing. And this is one of the, one of the slides which emerged out of the uh, brainstorming session and the mind map. But after we got that, we can loosely classify them what is the topic, what is the subtopic, what are bullets, what are sub-bullets, and what is the image. What I want you to see carefully in this slide is the weightages given to different things and the hierarchy given. Uh, let me tell you that all the softwares allow you, uh, actually don't allow you, uh, allow you to change it, but by default give you a very good way of presenting the hierarchy in a default way. 
So the moment you say topic, if you are using Beamer or something, you can immediately say topic, subtopic, and it will organize the font sizes and the weightages of font size automatically. Similar thing happens in PowerPoint. The problem starts when people overrule these default settings and then change the fonts and colors of that. So uh, the result is very bad sometimes where the subtopics is more prominent than the topic itself or, or vice versa. So this, this should be avoided. Also look at the, the size of the image in that earlier one. But when we say that use of graphics is, is coming to the point, so we actually now enter the visual communication part. Uh, let us now see what are the basic types of graphics available, which are the different types of graphics available, and I am classifying it into static and the motion graphics. Within static graphics, I would like to show you a range of uh, various things. Uh, this is a slide which shows you actually the mapping of what function is your graphic going to do, and accordingly, what is the type of graphic you should select for that. Uh, I will go in detail of that um, by showing examples of each and every point, but uh, this is there in the presentation so you can see it for yourself. The first uh, point which is, to this yeah, yeah, we have, we, last time slides are also available, even this. Slides, slides, they are not accessible to them. Not accessible to no, no, no. Okay. This, what? This type Moodle, you have to upload on this Moodle. Okay. So we will, I will upload this on Moodle so that you can carefully look at the slide which I just presented earlier. But now I am coming to a point called types of graphics and this is the very first type of graphic which is used most commonly. And uh, some people who were actually uh, uh, making, who did that uh, photographic mind map of Tum Tums? Somebody did that, right? Which one? This group, ah, that, okay. So you had used different types of graphic. Now I, I'll be explaining different types of graphics already. Just try to see what fits where. Right? So I'm giving you definitions of different types of graphics. So when you had the primary image in, uh, do you have it? Does somebody have that? So probably we can switch between these two. Are the other mind maps back on the front row? Hi, it's there. Sandeep, can you get that? So the basic type of graphic is called a decorative graphic, which normally is only to, to attract the attention of a person with its entire text thing available and in between you need to have an attraction point which is used by using a decorative graphic. It just adds an aesthetic appeal to the whole thing. Now this was a mind map submitted by this group where the Tum Tums of IITB was the central idea, so they used a photograph of Tum Tum. But just look at it, uh, you will probably not be able to see it, but uh, you had a photograph for overcrowding, where you actually had a picture of uh, students uh, clinging to the entire bus at wherever point possible, like uh, doors, windows, and all that thing, right? So that photograph was very apt for the topic what you wanted to say, overcrowding. Uh, and that is not a decorative graphic, by the way. So I'll just come to that. Why, what is the difference between this graphic and that graphic? Right, so this is decorative graphic typically is used by newspapers a lot just to uh, break the monotony of text, they use a graphic called decorative graphic. But representational graphic is a step ahead than that. It will give you the actual picture what is happening. So a photograph of the situation is mostly used that. In modern times, a screenshot is a very effective graphic for representing something. So when the text says that you click here and if you right click, three options will come up and you select the center option, that text is well represented if you have a screenshot of the same thing, because then people will have less confusion about what happens when, right? There are some things called mnemonic graphics where we associate visual with the text. How many people remember this? Like if I ask you a question, how many days October has? So a lot of people suddenly do this, right? So this is, this is permanently embedded in your system that you have to associate this. This has actually no uh, there's nowhere you so actually have seen this picture probably, but it has been told to you and it has already embedded in your system that okay, whenever I have to find out 30 days and 31 days of month, of any month, I'll just do this. So these are mnemonic graphics which have a larger impact actually. If you do something like this, uh, it has been proven by theories, especially for the primary children, to associate C for cat using a shape of C and the cat together. This is called a mnemonic graphic. 
then there are something called organizational graphic. So these are uh, mainly to tell you the qualitative relationship between each other. So this map is a very good example of that. So map will tell you that hostel 14 is far away from uh, main gate. Probably it will not tell you how much distance directly at times, but there are to the scale maps also available. But most probably it will tell you in first glance, it will tell you that it is far away. So this qualitative relationship is very easily established. But if you want quantitative relationship to be shown, what can you use? Any guesses? If you want to show quantitative relationship between the data what you are presenting, whatever you have. Yeah, exactly. So you can use graphs and pie charts. And uh, there are n number of graphs and pie charts available. And I will come to that uh, in, in subsequent slides. There are something called transformational graphics, which actually help you illustrate uh, things which have a time uh, is the factor which keeps changing and you have the object changing accordingly. When you want to represent that in a static graphic, this is the way it is done. So uh, there are again lot of studies showing how this is effective and at times it has been uh, proved that it is more effective than a video because the retention is very high. If I show you a video of the same thing, it's very difficult for you to pause at a proper place where the teacher wanted you to see a particular phase of that particular action and then understand it. On the other hand, if a graphic is presented to you that the pulley is at center, our pulley is at the end, so these phases or stages are shown very nicely using a transformational graphic. So that is why it is found to be very interesting. But what it does not do is this thing. Uh, it will not help you to interpret things. This is one step ahead of that, where you want to illustrate a principle or a process where it has multiple uh, forces acting along with what is uh, uh, happening inside. So the arrows and the direction of the arrows, maybe co multiple colored arrows also will be used in that, will be very helpful for explaining a particular principle that start from there and you can add on numbers to the same thing to illustrate the entire principle. So that in one picture you can, you can do this. So can you, uh, can you just see where, where this was happening? So what is the center picture? Because we have just said tum tums at IITB, it is just a decorative graphic because you just have to show a tum tum, that's all, right? But uh, when you say overcrowding, you have shown the overcrowded bus, which actually means a representation of what is happening actually. So that's how you can, so if you had a map, so you had uh, mentioned that the routes are bad or something. So there you could have used a map and that, that could have said uh, about a uh, qualitative comparison between the two. So loosely, this is how uh, the mapping is done. So for facts, representational graphics are the best bet. Although uh, these uh, researchers have not confirmed that this is the only way to show that, but most of the time it is proven that this mapping works fine for the kind of content you are going to use. So it depends on the content what you are trying to do. Uh, you can easily select the type of graph. Uh, I, I, as I said, for the qualitative, uh, quantitative thing, which I have specially included because the kind of audience I am talking to today, will have these cases most of the time. So you want to represent uh, data for year 2006 and 2007, and uh, instead of a table, um, graph would be much more uh, easy to explain because visually you can see what is the difference between the two. On the other side, you see this kind of table. What's wrong with this table? So we have to have a table about this, that's fine. But what's, what's the problem with this table? Any guesses? Huh? <laughs> Row? You can't add up. No, no, they don't add up to 100. Okay, no, that's not a, that's a kind of a mathematical problem. But <laughs> let us let us talk about the visual problem in this. They don't add up to 100 is well taken. Okay, yeah. It should be sorted. Uh, sorted in terms of. Uh, you mean to say the percent poverty column, okay. So what can be done to make it look better? 
you the name ah yeah so denomination should be same right so if it has two decimals after the point then you, everything should have even if it is zero so this will be better to understand as compared to this so how many people have seen such tables on the left hand side uh, which have been just because you know what the data is but not necessarily the other person who is reading your paper will understand what you wanted to say similarly here is another graph uh, it shows data from 1940 to 2000 what's wrong with this graph the granularity problem right so you don't have any data after like 10000 uh, but still you have shown it up to 50000 for no rhyme or reason you just show it this much and it should be good enough for you to explain what you wanted to say so such things are are very important and uh, for example here is uh, representation of phases we wanted to say phase 1 phase 2 phase 3 i have taken deliberately examples from technical writing because uh, you are going to write more and more content in that area so i am deliberately examples are chosen only from that point of view so there are phases that you do something in the first stage second stage third stage so it's very important that you have a box for that stage so that people don't mix up stages between 1 and 2 and 3 and four, 2 and 3 and the arrow tells you how you go to that right okay so here is what uh, we are nearing to the end of the class today so here is the assignment again uh, it's a visual assignment you have to create a presentation from the mind map what you have submitted uh, <coughs> then add suitable graphics based on today's lecture now just have a look at those fact principle type of content what you are using and then add accordingly whatever graphics you have but the last bullet is very important and that's that's the most important bullet uh, for the slide you have to create a graphic which is not suitable for that it's a bad graphic or a counter graphic and you have to mention that that this is a counter graphic slide on the top so that i know otherwise i will maybe while evaluating i'll find more counter graphic slides in the whole presentation is a bad idea so just <laughs> announce it that this is the bad graphic slide <laughs> let me take a call whether other slides are also bad graphic slides <laughs> next class would be based on the presentations what you submit and uh, we will be discussing some of the presentations here and then we will be looking at the impress part that after you have the presentation in place how will uh, color schemes and typography make it impressive than what it was so that would be the next class so i i wish to see maximum presentations before 6 am that day so keep me up keep me up Thank you.